we're, we're going to do something a little different tonight when we get going here. Normally, we would do News You Can Use. We're going to start a new feature probably next week sometime that's going to talk about the uh, some of the, the downsides to this business, some of the things that you got to watch out the gotchas, the things you can get in trouble for. Um, haven't come up with a name for it yet. It's not, I haven't got anything catchy like News You Can Use or Tricks of the Trade, but we will. Uh, and we'll start doing this probably on Wednesday calls, Wednesday, maybe Monday, but probably Wednesday calls. Um, anyway, I want to tell you about one today that, uh, you know, and these are things that you can look at as just cautionary tales, things that you want to be uh, careful of, make sure you're not doing because in, in many cases, it can get you in either financial or legal trouble. Um, and the way that the law is written today uh, here in the United States, it used to be they had a standard called mens rea, which means you had to have criminal intent in order to violate the law. You had, in other words, intend to commit a crime, to be guilty of committing a crime, if that makes sense. Uh, it's not like that today. Now, if you just violate, there's strict guidelines on some things. <clears throat> For example, a lot of the EPA rules and regulations dealing with uh, water discharge, wa uh, uh, wetlands, things like that. These things are bright line problems that if you step over the line, like you were to, in the farming industry that I'm in out here in California, if you were to go in and even accidentally alter a, a wetlands area or, you know, try and level out your ground on, on ground that's not supposed to be leveled, uh, you could end up in jail, federal jail. Um, it's, it doesn't mean if you, even if you didn't intend to do it, you're still in trouble. There's a, there's a number of things like that in the real estate world uh, that I want to make you guys aware of. And um, a lot of the stuff you probably heard during our various discussions over the last few years, but it's always good to note. So we'll, we'll keep track of this stuff. The one thing I want to talk about tonight is the bankruptcy rules and how that affects you. You get a lot of sellers out there, a fair number anyway, um, and we've had several clients recently ask about this question. Uh, sellers claim they're in bankruptcy and claim that they want to sell their house. Um, and we actually had this happen to our own housing team today, yesterday or Tuesday and today. And uh, I had Brandy go back and, and talk to the seller and the bankruptcy trustee and say, does the seller actually have the legal authority and right to sell their house? Because the way bankruptcy works is once you file bankruptcy, all of your assets become, at least temporarily, become owned by the U.S. bankruptcy court's trustee, uh, essentially the bankruptcy court itself. They, they have a trustee or a person, typically a CPA or accountant of some type, sometimes they're a lawyer. Uh, sometimes they're both, and their job is to administer the assets for the benefit of the creditors of the estate, which is what the debtor used to own. Um, frequently, people will, you know, they're under the misimpression that that means that they still own their house, or they still own their car, or they still own their savings account, or their IRA. Those things are not true, at least until a judge signs off and says, you have the right to do something with this as you see fit, or with the approval of the bankruptcy trustee, you can't do anything. And to go against that could literally land these guys in jail. Um, you're basically stealing from a federal officer. There's different levels of criminal conduct. Um, and unfortunately, the way our society works, if you do something against a federal employee, it's a much higher standard than if you go punch your county mailman, in, or not the mailman, that's a good example, some county employee in the nose, be a different level of penalty and fine. And the bankruptcy courts are generally under the jurisdiction of the federal government. And so you don't want to mess around with that. You want to make sure that you know what you're doing when you get involved in buying a property that's in or has been recently in bankruptcy. And your best and safest way to go is to talk to the trustee, the bankruptcy trustee. One of the ways you do that is by going into PACER. It's PACER.org, P-A-C-E-R. That's the U.S. Bankruptcy Records um, Repository. And you can find out everything you want to know up to the minute on a bankruptcy. And you can find out real quickly who the trustee is. 
And my advice to you would be before you guys ever do anything with regard to a bankruptcy property, property in bankruptcy or, or one that's supposedly out of bankruptcy, um, I would contact the bankruptcy trustee and make sure that you have and the seller, if they're selling it to you and you as the buyer have the legal capacity um, to be able to conduct that transaction without getting yourself into trouble. The, the courts have held that if you conspire with a seller of a house who's trying to defraud the bankruptcy court, you will be guilty of conspiracy against the bankruptcy court. So, and even if you didn't know, you know, it's, uh, you know, you've, you guys have all heard this thing. It's ignorance is no excuse for the law. It's true. Um, and so, you know, this is one of those beware situations. We're dealing with bankruptcy. You know, there's, there's some gurus that have gone around in, in years past and said, this is the best thing since sliced bread, you know, buy these properties out of bankruptcy and, and all that. If you know what you're doing, yeah, you can do well in that particular thing. But unless you're properly trained and you know exactly what to do, I would stay away from that. At a, at a minimum, I would do what I would suggest, what I have suggested, which is to contact the trustee in charge of that particular bankruptcy estate and make sure that what you're doing is signed off by somebody affiliated with the government, i.e. the trustee. So that is that is uh, issue number one. And uh, we'll talk about on a weekly basis. We'll bring up another topic or two. Um, Unfortunately, I've been through some of these kind of things myself, and some of these, uh, I have friends or clients who've run across this stuff as well. So we'll try and give you some first-person examples or narratives or third-person and um, let you know the, the kinds of things you need to be careful about. You can't just go out there and do this business without some thought and some preparation. It's one of the reasons that we recommend in our course, all of our courses, that you work with an attorney, a local attorney, uh, to make sure that everything you do comports with the laws in that jurisdiction in which you're gonna deal. So as we had a call, I think it was on the Tuesday call, somebody asked, listen, if you've had an escrow company and a title company in this area, do you need to work with your attorney still? The answer is yes. Uh, you still need to do that, at least on your first transaction or two. Um, and after that, if you're doing the same kind of exact same kind of transaction, you probably don't need to, but you want to make sure that you get a sign off by somebody who knows the law that what you're doing is in fact uh, lined up with the law, keep you out of trouble.